Welcome to a very special edition of the Be Real TV Smoke Box. I got, you know, one of my one of my idols, one of my inspirations, you know, Mr. Tommy Chong in the box. This is a special smoke box. This isn't the normal Cadillac that we use. This is the mystery machine, if you will. Yeah, uh, what, it, it, it is a mystery how it still runs. Yes, is that I, the mystery? Yeah, that, there's a deep mystery on how this thing keeps running. Well, you're in a good neighborhood. Yes. Because if it breaks down, there's a lot of experts around here that can fix it. We got a bunch of mechanics waiting on the side <laughs> in case... Uh, no, we're waiting to push it. <laughs> waiting to push it, yeah. We get a push start going on. So, you know, I, I've been doing these smoke boxes for a while, quite a while now, and one of the names that always pops up that people, you know, hit us up in, in the comments, you know, of... Um, for the, for the smoke boxes, when are you gonna get Tommy Chong? You know, and here he is. So now you can quit complaining to me. And Tommy Chong is here. You know, you ask and you, sh you shall you receive. Shall receive. Yeah. Now I know you know that you guys, since since putting everything back together, and and um, you know reuniting, you guys went on tours. You guys branched out and did like animation. You guys. Um, you in particular went into doing uh, products in the in the in the, in the pro marijuana culture. Yes. Yeah. How, how does it feel all these years later to see it evolve into what it's evolved into? I mean, you guys inspired this whole thing. It's like, it's like a nice high, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you smoke something and and all of a sudden these this magical world appeared. You know, isn't it? It's like we just conjured it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like in, in a van like this here with it with the smoke going. This is all you and guys. All of a sudden, you know, you know, thirty some odd years have gone by, and instead of the cops are chasing us down, but not to arrest us, yeah. they want to buy some. They want to buy some, <laughs> yeah. or you know, yeah, or so, get, or get a picture. Yeah, yeah, get a picture or or smoke one with us. I mean, does it, I mean that's that's gotta like be almost like shocking from from the way that you guys were looked at and perceived from when you started because it was taboo back then to to like now well see we always knew we were right right and it was just a matter of time before everybody else you know got hip smoked up got it you know got hip and now everybody has everybody's what's happening man. yeah I, I mean the people that are, are are trying to stop the movement you know it's like standing in front of an avalanche. It's, it's not true. going to happen. It's, yeah, you, you, there's there's no way to stop it. And you the guys, genies, the, the smokes out of the joint. And you guys started this movement. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it, your the the your humor and the political aspect of your humor inspired a lot of musicians to go in and like such as ourselves with Cypress Hill and eventually Snoop Dogg and Red and Meth and then the whole you know anybody who talked about marijuana in the hip-hop culture always often referenced Cheech and Chong yeah. you know what I mean so it's like not only did you inspire a generation you know of people that that uh, were like-minded music that you guys liked. You know, you guys listened to everything. You mm -hmm. guys were into blues, rock, jazz, all that sort really. of stuff. So you had those people, you know, in tune to what you guys were doing. But then you guys got the hip-hop crowd so much later. But you know, I gotta really give credit where credit's due because I got turned on myself by jazz musicians. Right. They were the ones, the, you know, uh, John Hendricks, of Hend Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross. Right. He, he taught me really how to smoke, how to get high. He used to sing, you know, he did all that scatting and, and he used to sing, so he couldn't he couldn't smoke like a lot of people do, you know, a lot of pot. Right. But what he would do, he'd take a little bit of hash and roll it up in tiny little little balls, and then he'd put it in, in, a, in a filter uh, without the tobacco, and then he'd smoke the little hash balls through a filter. Huh. And then he could go on and sing and create and write and it was the jazz musicians that that showed me the the magic power of this plant and you know and i went from there it was easy yeah. and you guys kind of mixed it that you mixed the humor you mixed the the politics and and the music all together because i mean cheech and chong almost in every movie you guys had um a musical type of number oh, in there that's what i'm saying it was all, all jazz it was all 
e even the humor, what we did, we, we, we changed everybody's perception of what, uh, you know, Hollywood had all the Latinos and all the Chicanos, you know, they had a, gang members and, 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 you know, tattoos and bad people. And we showed the world was up in smoke that the, the lowrider is everybody. Yeah. It's the anybody. Lowrider anybody is yeah. a, a young kid that just wants to party and get high and get laid and, and just be, just have fun. And, and have real. fun, yeah. <laughs> just be real. And that was it. That's the whole generation of it, you know what I mean? And, and, um, you know, see, you know, seeing people pay homage to you to this day is a great thing. Yeah. You know, because y you have to give the credit where the credit is due. I mean, you know, a lot of people might have attributed, you know, the, 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 the Rasta part of the movement to Bob Marley. But, the, you know, it being out there on the social level and, and just beyond music, that was you guys all day. Well, you know, we, we influenced Bob Marley. Yeah. We did. Bob Marley came over... Uh, and played at the Roxy. His first live gig was at the Roxy. Uh, co, uh, we we co billed. We did. We did. We shared the billing, and uh, and it was their only appearance in America up until you know that, that time. That was the first time they were in in, uh, in Los Angeles or in America, and. And, uh, and we played with him. And you shed the light on him. Well, man, that's and, beautiful. And, you know, he was smoking a ton of weed, you know, because it was, uh, you know, before we met him. But, but what we did and what he did, you know, we, we just showed the world again. Yeah. That hey, this that's wrong with this. You guys opened up a lot of doors mm -hmm. in a lot of situations, even before your time. I, I, you guys probably didn't know you guys were doing doing no. it but you guys were definitely on the right path and 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 you know did you, I know you had to have found resistance because I know you 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 were, I went to jail you went, <laughs> of course you know but, but but I'm saying even before that because to me when, when that happened that was a lot of politics that yeah. they threw at you they had to make you an example there yeah well uh, they really had to go to great lengths to find people that that did not like Cheech and Chong you know because the whole world loved Cheech and Chong and, and and so when they arrested me, it, it was a shock to everybody. Right. Uh, you know, especially cops and, and prosecutors. It, you know, made them embarrassed. Yeah. That they, you know that their their colleagues were that fucking lame that they would uh, go after someone for selling a bomb. Yeah. For a, for a piece of glass. Yeah. And look at us. Yeah. Here we are. Here we legally. Are. Legally. Legally. This legally. is legal. This is medicine. And smoking it on a piece of glass. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And is that your own? Yeah, that's the funky fill tip right there we're smoking on. I love you can that. only smoke with, you know, Father Chong on, you know, a funky fill tip. <laughs> and, and and you got you got a bunch of products out right now. You know, what what are some of the products that, that that you have out oh. there in the world right now? Well, the Future Roller is a, is a joint, or a, what do you call it? Cone roller. Yeah. And it rolls, it's from Amsterdam, well, well made uh, roller. And it's an old design. It's a design, you know, like the old tobacco design. In fact, I used to roll cigarettes for my aunt. Or she taught me how to roll cigarettes. That's how you learned? That was your first yeah. roll? Yeah. Rolling for your aunt. And so it's the same kind of roller, except it rolls cones, and it's got a filter that you put on the end. So you can smoke all your product right down to the to the cardboard. You know? Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's nice. And, and what else we got? We got a strain from Colorado called Chong Star. Chong Star. Hey, I love your strain. Baby. Oh, thank you. The jet fuel. Ooh. We got that's the tangy good. as well. That's good. We got to do something. We got to do something. We got to create a strain. <laughs> you know, the, you know, our Dr. Green Thumb strain for Tommy Chong. I bet yeah. people would love that shit. Yeah, you know, because people always ask, hey, when are you guys going to do something together again? Yeah, you know, we got to do something. You know, the first time we did something, you guys, you guys, uh, you did something on our first album. It was just you. Mm -hmm. Cheech wasn't on that. It was just you. Yeah. And, I, and I always say this story. It was hard for me to keep it together <laughs> in the sketches because it was so goddamn funny. I kept laughing. I was ruining almost every take of it. You know what I mean? It was but fun. <laughs> it was fun. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, <laughs> but that's how long we've we've known each other. And, and you know, when I got into this game, you know, with, with music and, and talking about what, what we were talking about, I never thought it would lend itself to ever, you know, crossing paths with you. I knew we were influenced by you and 
we watched we watched all your movies and and followed the shit that you guys did. But I gotta tell you though, man, I've been blessed. I've been meeting great people all my life, right from the very early part of my life, and you fall into that category. Thank you very much. Of, of you know of greatness, of you know making a mark on on the music scene and and the weed scene. You know, I could I could definitely say this, you know, um you guys not only talked about it, you not only talked about it, you you walked it like you talked it. You 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 dealt with the activism, you know, as as well as the creative, the humor, the entertainment aspect. Yeah, that well, you when when we became Cheech and Chong, uh, you know, when we decided when I decided that we had something the, the thing I wanted to I didn't want to name I didn't want to do a group named after, you know, that anybody could be in. Right. I wanted to use my name, Cheech's name. And so when I found out it was his nickname, perfect, Cheech and Chong, because it gave off... It just a, has such a ring to well, it. Well, it had, a, it gave off a lot of meaning, very, very uh, spiritual meanings. You know, like it was, it's a first name and a last name. Right. And it's, it's, it's not a, there's, all the cultures are there. And, yeah. You know, the, the Latin, Latin Mexican, uh, the Chinese, Scotch, Irish, it's all one the mixture. The melting pot, yeah. Yeah, and so our, our thought process was of that nature, you know, that cover everything, and, and that's what we did. That's what you did. Damn, it's been good to have you on the smoke box. What's, what's your favorite strain you like to smoke out there? That one we just smoked. What this one. Uh, this one, what was this? This was, uh, I believe this was some uh, Sunset Sherbert done, grown by our, our good friend Sherbinsky. He's up in the, the Bay Area. That's my favorite. North. This is good. Yeah. It's a good favorite to have. I had one in Seattle. I, uh, I think we're going to, I think it's going to be one of our strains. Smoothest smoke I've ever had. I mean, I just, you know how much weed I've smoked. I took a toke of this, I had to take another toke. And another, it, w it was like, almost like fresh mineral water. It yeah. Tasted so good. In, in your opinion, I know uh, Amsterdam used to be like the place with the greatest smoke in the world. To you, in your opinion, where is the greatest smoke in the world now? Oh, it's always been California. Boom. Oh, I just heard it. From the man. Not from me, not from Snoop Dogg, not from Red Man, not from none of us. You heard it from the man, California. Yeah. Yo, hey, it's been great having you in the box. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we can have you again and do a part two and, and all that. I know you're a busy man. Um, let them know what, what, what do you got coming up next? Like, I know you guys got a lot of stuff coming up. You know, next. just uh, uh, log on the uh, Chong and Chong podcast. Or the Chong Show on, uh, on uh, you know, teachingchong.com. So when's your podcast? What, what? It's daily, almost daily. Almost daily, what yeah. time? Uh, whenever we get around to it. Whenever he gets around to it. <laughs> yeah. go, to, go to the podcast, watch this yeah. man. You'll find me. If you want to hear me, you'll find me. You'll learn something. And my son. He, he's a great... Uh, Shout out to Paris. Yeah, my son, yeah. he's great. You'll learn some things. Leave some comments. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Watch the podcast. Learn from the man. Be Real TV Smoke Box. Thank you very much. Over and out.